Hi everyone, and welcome to Upper Room Ministry Sunday School. Uh, for the past uh, three weeks, we have been dealing on the subject of faith. Why it's important to us, how we get it, what we do with it. Uh, today should be the conclusion of it. And I'd just like to do a little kind of refresher on it. What is faith? Faith is believing something that is unseen. Examples of faith, the wind, electricity in the back of your, in the front of your outfit, things that we cannot physically see with our eyes, but the fact that we have complete and total faith that it's there. In Hebrews 11.3, it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So in other words, God created it. It wasn't there before God spoke it into existence. How do we get faith? Faith actually comes in Romans 10, 17. It says, Faith cometh from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. So we will develop our faith, we will strengthen our faith by getting into the Word on a regular basis. The more we understand God's Word, the more faith we're going to have. It tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, that we're to walk by faith and not by sight. So, we really need to have faith. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, almost that whole chapter deals with nothing but faith. So, if you're looking for good basic reference material, uh, we want to get into Hebrews chapter 11. Now we're going to see why we need faith. When we get into Luke chapter 17 <laughs> verse 6, it tells us right off the bat about faith. But how much faith is it that we need? In Luke 17, 6, it said, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say to this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the roots, and thou shalt be planted in the sea, and you should obey. Now the mustard seed is the, one of the smallest seeds that there are. So God's basically saying to us in that scripture is, you just need a little tiny itsy bitsy piece of faith to do miraculous things. There are so many people that we run into out there that have no faith at all. A lot of them even present themselves as Christians. But when you say, I want to pray for a healing, or I want to pray for this, or I want to pray for that, they don't have the faith that God's going to actually do it for them. In Matthew... Chapter 6, verse 30, we go a little bit farther in the fact that the Lord recognized that we do not have a lot of faith. Because in chapter 30 it said, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith. 
And he was addressing the people out there that did not have the faith that God was going to take care of them. He was using that as an example. If God will not grow grass out onto the field, something that is of a temporary nature, more or less to say it's going to be here one day and gone the next, how much more faithful is he going to be to us that he has made in his own image to meet our needs, to do mighty works through us. We must always remember, though, anything that we do, we are just the instrument. It is everything that is done is done through God, through Jesus. They are the ones with the power. We are just the ones with the instrument that are going to extend that power out. So, you've got to have faith that God has special things in store for you. You're not just supposed to be a couch potato sitting there and maybe picking up your Bible once in a while and reading it or contenting yourself with uh, watching a religious program on TV. God has things for you to do. He gave each and every one of us the great commission to go out and spread God's word, go out and save souls. I know some of you are out there saying, well, that's not my thing. I'm not comfortable doing it. I know that because I felt that way once myself. But the more you obey God's word, the more faith that you have that he is going to give you the words, he's going to give you the strength, he's going to give you the ability to reach other people, the more he is going to use you. People will often be overheard to say, wow, I wish I could do this, or I wish I could do that. Well, if you trust in the Lord, you have faith in the Lord, you can do these things. It's important to remember that God has a job for each and every one of us. I always felt that my calling for the Lord was helping people when they had problems with their house or mechanical problems or something like that. So one day God just said, no, I gave you a big mouth, I want you to use it. And that's how he is with each one of us. He doesn't throw us directly into the fire. He prepares us for the jobs that he has for us to do. In Ephesians chapter 4, <clears throat> the Lord goes on to explain that there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ. There is but one faith, the Christian faith. There is but one baptism, and that baptism is with the Holy Spirit. When you become a Christian and you actually get filled with the Holy Spirit, that is the true baptism. John the Baptist explained that when he was baptizing people with water in the river, that there was somebody coming that was more powerful than he was that was going to baptize them in the Holy Spirit. So each and every one of you out there that has accepted the Lord, and has been given the gift of tongues. You have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. It is especially you that are being called out to exercise your faith. Because if we, the faithful, do not step up and stand up to the way 
the world is trying to block any mention of Christianity, any mention of God, any mention of Jesus, you'll see how very important it is that we stand our ground. That when somebody says, you can't, say, I will. You must remember the things that the apostles went through and the early disciples went through. They were just not told, no, they can't do it, or they were not made fun of, or they were not, quote, persecuted on social media or anything. These people were beaten to death, thrown off of buildings, hung, stabbed, you name it, and it happened to them, stoned. Yet they had the faith to continue to do God's work regardless of what the personal cost might be. And today we need a rebirth, we need a revival of that kind of faith so that we can go forth and dispel the naysayers and say, my God is the one true God and I'm going to stand up for him regardless of what you say or regardless of what you think. In James chapter 2 verse 17, it comes and sums up everything that I've just said where it says, faith without works is dead. You could have all the faith in the world and if you don't exhibit it, you don't use that faith by going out and doing something that spreads God's word. There's no sense in having that faith. It's wasted. We must all remember that God gave us the gift of faith. And yes, faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the nine gifts that he's given us. He didn't give it to us to hoard away in our own, lock it up in a safe so that nobody else could see it. He gave it to us so that we can give it away. Give it away to other people. We have to real, really begin to step up to the plate. We really need to start stepping out and exercising our faith and exercise our God-given gifts and talents to continue to spread God's Word. Because whether you want to believe it or not, we are in a war. We are in a war, an even fiercer war than the soldiers that fought in World War II, or the First World War, or the Civil War. Because we're not fighting against another man or another country. We're fighting against the devil who is trying to take control of the world. The nice thing about it is our history book, the Bible, tells us in Revelation that the devil fails. But it is only through the exercise of the believer's faith that we manage to overcome. So, do you want to become part of history? Or do you want to become a footnote? You realize after you have been out dealing with the world just how lost it is. How very little faith that most people have. We are in a very cynical 
time in our history. And when I mean our history, I don't just mean America, I mean the world. It seems like every time you see somebody on TV or you read articles or something, it's always somebody trying to decry what has been proven fact for years and years and years. This is where one of our other gifts, the gifts of discernment, is going to become extremely important to the Christian. Because the Bible said, even at the end times, the elect will try to be deceived by the enemy. So, if you can't tell fact from fiction, if you're not asking for and then using the gift of discernment, you could very easily be one of the persons that lose their faith and in turn lose their salvation. Is faith important? It can mean the difference between eternal life and eternal damnation in hell. I'd say that's pretty important. In Titus, chapter 1, verse 1, um, I would like to read that. I just took some really short notes on it, and I think the verse needs to be read in its context. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, in the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Paul was probably, arguably, the greatest evangelist that has ever walked the face of the earth. But Paul was not always that way. Paul suffered a conversion, a transformation from persecuting the Christians to becoming one of the mainstays in the Christian movement, spreading God's word. That did not happen by accident. Paul's faith in God did not happen by accident. It's something that grew and it grew to a strength that most people today could not understand the amount of faith that Paul had. It would be incomprehensible to them. There's some examples of faith. One of them was probably one of the most well-known. It's when Peter got out of the boat and walked on water. How did he do that? He kept his eyes on the Lord. He had faith that the Lord was not going to let him sink. And then finally, he realized what he was doing, and his unbelief overcame his faith. And he did start to sink. I hear many, many people say, oh, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. But when you start to question them, you find out they really don't have that much faith. They think they do. But the stark reality of it is that they do not have the faith that Christ is asking for us to exhibit.
in Matthew 25, verse 21, Jesus talks about the good and faithful servant. That good and faithful servant had faith. Maybe it was only faith the size of a mustard seed, but he had enough faith that God saw that what he was doing was good and that he had faith to accomplish what he needed to. In Jude, it tells us that we need to ask, Jude chapter 3, to ask for the faith that was delivered to the saints. Even the saints themselves were lacking in faith. Peter, when he walked on water. Thomas, when Jesus appeared to him in the upper room after the resurrection, when he said, I have to put my hand in your side, I have to see the nail holes in your hand. You remember what our definition of faith was. Faith is the belief in things not seen. And Thomas proved that until he saw, he didn't have that faith. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, they tell us that we can overcome the world. Overcome the world through faith. And when we're talking about overcoming the world, we're talking about overcoming the works of the devil. We're talking about overcoming destructive spirits, evil spirits that are out there. We're talking about being able to conquer our enemies or the enemy simply by having faith. We go back again and say, how do we get faith? Faith is gotten through the Word of God. Not a mystery. It's not a huge revelation. It's just faith is gotten through hearing, and hearing is through the Word of God. Very, very simple. The last scripture that we're going to cover is Revelation chapter 2 verse 3 and that's telling us that we need to hold on to our faith. We need to persevere. No matter what things look like, we need to hang on to that faith. We truly have been given a marvelous gift. A gift that knows no measure. A gift that is so valuable there is no price that we can pay or put on it for the salvation that Christ delivered on the cross for us. When we sit back and we allow that gift to go unused, then we have truly <clears throat> let Christ die in vain. Now, if you've been following this lesson, I have some examples if you would like to follow farther of the examples of faith that are in the Bible. And if you'd like to write them down, I will be glad to give them to you. There's uh, 12 of them that I have written down. There's way more that's in the Bible, but these are 12 that kind of stand out. And the first one is Mark chapter 5. 
verses 25 through 34. Matthew chapter 9, verses 21 and 22. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Hebrews 11, chapter 1. Hebrews 6, verse 19. Romans 5, verses 1 and 2. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Mark chapter 2, verse 5. Matthew 14, verse 31. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 through 21. And Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Anyone that's interested in furthering their study on faith, these are some very good references. I really encourage people to step out and read these. I also encourage you all to go out and practice your faith every day. And when I mean practice, I don't mean just sitting down and doing a daily prayer or something like that. It's exercise your faith. Uh, yesterday while I was at work, there was a uh, older couple came into the store and as they were leaving, the lady was in a wheelchair and he had a shirt on that says, fathers are good at fixing some things but grandfathers are great for fixing everything. And being a grandfather, I told them I liked his shirt. And we got talking back and forth and found out that they were believers. Amen. And it was in that opportunity, brief as it was, I did have a chance to pray for the lady that was in the wheelchair. The whole encounter did not take three minutes. Yet, for that one instance, we touched two people. And if you want to count me, God touched the third person. So we need to go out, we need to step out in faith, we need to practice. We need to practice what we're preaching, saying, yes, we need to grow our faith, we need to use it, we need to go out, we need to spread God's word, we need to grow God's kingdom, because that's what it's all about. It's been said many times that salvation is forever. It's not a short one-time thing, it's a forever. So when you give somebody the gift of salvation by getting them and leading them to the Lord, and leading them to pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you've given them a gift that is going to last for eternity.